Hey there everyone, Chris Woolley here, and we're looking at the Photoshop side of light painting from our vintage airplane at the Professional Photographers of Washington Annual Conference in Spokane. So let's look at how we get all these images together. And the very first thing we wanna do is find and make sure you've downloaded all of the sample images and stuff uh, so that you can follow along or just watch the uh, tutorial if you just wanna see how it's done without actually practicing. But I am including the, uh, the file so that you can practice by yourself as well. So we need to load them all into a single file. To do that, I'm gonna come up here to File. I'm gonna come down here to Scripts and we're gonna load files into Stack. And basically what we're going to do is we're just going to have Photoshop create a new document for us and align all the layers. So where it says use, we're gonna go from files to folder because we wanna load all the images in the folder that I provided for you. And we're gonna hit browse and make sure that we're finding the light painting images. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay. It's gonna look like it's blank because it's just the folder, not the files we're doing. And I want to uh, uh, give it a second while it loads and finds those files. It's populated them all. And we're not gonna use all of these, but I'm loading up what we took uh, so we can see what we want or don't want. And here I'm gonna click attempt to automatically align source images. If I had used a remote trigger, this wouldn't be necessary to do, uh, but we had a real live human doing it, which means there may be minor uh, vibrations or movements on the camera uh, because we did this as a uh, live tutorial and wanted you to be able to see what was happening, not just me looking on my phone uh, where I, I was, would be triggering it from. So I'm going to click the attempt to automatically align source images so it will align us if there was minor camera movement. We're going to go ahead and hit OK. And this is going to load all these files up into a stack for us. And we're going to let that roll. It's going to take just a second while it uh, does its magic. And we can see all the little thumbnails. And it's going to align. And there's lots to analyze on this one, so it'll take just a moment. We'll catch back as soon as it's done. All right, so it has mer or aligned all the layers, and we can tell that it's done that, and there maybe was a little bit of camera vibration because I've got a small little area that's kind of bleeding out on the edges. Uh, but if I toggle on and off any of the, uh, the layers, we can see that the plane is going to be perfectly aligned as we go through all these different layers. So kind of cool that uh, that's doing it for us so we don't have to do any of the hard work. So this next part we wanna do is start setting ourselves up for success when doing it. So we want to isolate our background elements from the light painting elements. And so I am going to uh, uh, take these first three images, the one with the nice sky, the one where we have kind of an overall neutral shot of the plane and one where we exposed for all these shadowed areas. I'm just gonna group all three of these together and we're gonna call that background. So now I can toggle on and the, all those on and off and we've got our background elements already set. Um, let's move this up here so we can kind of see what's happening with all this. Next thing I wanna do is go through and find all of these where we've done the actual light painting. And notice that there's no locked background layer because we uh, um, had them aligned in a stack. So there's no base image for this. Um, so I'm just gonna highlight all of them that have the flash that's going throughout. And this is the exact same technique if you use uh, continuous light uh, for doing it. Uh, we use flash for capturing the original one, but uh, same process. And we're gonna group this. I'm just gonna hit Control or Command G and we'll go and just call this one our plane. So I now want to have the plane above my main image uh, and the background shining through. So I've got my background if I need anything and I've got my plane. So I'm gonna stick this back up here so it's out of the way for me. There we go, it's out of the way. And so now I can start in on my base image. And what I like to do is kind of extract the plane or create a clipping mask that's going to uh, allow me to get the detail of the plane 
So when I'm doing the light painting, it's gonna make life easier. Now this part's a little bit boring, but I'm gonna walk you through it. Uh, we'll start learning the base element of it. Uh, and uh, what I wanna do is just basically be able to see the plane. So find whichever one of your layers. Remember we took our sky exposure. We had one that was a neutral exposure and then one that uh, really picked up those shadows. Uh, see what one works best. I'm kind of liking this one. I can see the detail and separation and everything pretty clearly. Uh, so I'm just going to start here. And we want to go through and basically, I'm going to zoom up real close on this one, uh, find our outlines of where our plane is going so that we can isolate this shape. Um, you could do this any way that you like. Uh, we could use our lasso tool and go through and find those shapes and just keep on adding in elements to it, going kind of sloppy there. Um, I prefer to use the pen tool. And if you've never used the pen tool, it is crazy powerful. Uh, they've introduced in the later versions of Photoshop the curvature pen tool, and that's what I'm gonna use. Uh, it just makes using the pen tool super handy. So what I'm gonna do with this is select, select the curvature pen tool, and now we can go through and we can just start plotting out our points. And what I like to do is just go through and, oops, Control Z to undo that one or Command Z, just go through and get a base outline I know this isn't gonna be perfect, but this is just giving me um, where all the points are so that I can go through and fine tune this. Um, so I'm just coming through, getting all this stuff and finding the key elements, just getting kind of a rough shape because we're gonna go through and fine tune this later. But I found that having it down and, uh, oh, I'm having trouble seeing what that is. Let's turn off that layer. Oh, there it is. Okay, that comes back in. Put back on this one so I can see everything. We're just gonna get this shape. All right, so now we've done our base selection. I've got everything uh, plotted out here, and uh, we've got a nice uh, clipping mask or a path uh, that we'll be able to extract our primary subject on. A couple of things to uh, uh, kind of point out. There are some like small gear things and things like here that I did not include uh, because I'll manually take those out uh, when I'm doing the final polishing and touching. I just went for the base shape so that I can get a majority of the work done very, very smoothly. Um, so just know that this is a pretty good starting point and it's going to save us a lot of work because we can manipulate this like crazy. And you can always find your paths that you've just created right here. Uh, I'm just going to call this one plain. Uh, so I know that I've got it saved as my path. Oh no, it disappeared. Wait, there it is. <laughs> I can click, I can find it back again. Um, other thing that I'm going to do uh, just uh, for kind of a safety is in the path section, I've got this highlighted. I can now click this button and we're going to get a nice selection of our plane. Uh, for just safety's sake, I'm going to go up here and go select. And then I'm going to save selection and call this plane just so I have it in two spaces in case I need it. Okay, so now coming back to our layers section, and uh, we're gonna see, oops, <laughs> not all layers, not just the selected. Uh, we're gonna see, now we've got that selection. Let me load it in case you haven't gone there because I hit an extra button. So we can go select, load selection. If yours did disappear, I'm gonna do the plane and say, okay, I wanna select that, my plane selected. So now I can come up here to my top layer where there's plane, and I can just hit this mask button because it's already selected. And look at that, we just cut out the plane and uh, we have nothing but the light paintings that we just did. So I'm gonna darken up that scene because we can add some drama. 
and we'll address the background later. Uh, you know what? I'm just going to make this background red uh, as a, a visual indicator, and I'm going to make the plane. Uh, let's make that one blue just so that we can find those a little bit easier if we do need them. And so when I'm looking at it, like, look at that top one. It just cut that out so beautifully. I've got straight lines. So as I go through and, like, look at these layers in here, they're all going to be masked out for where that main plane is. Uh, this makes the next process so much easier because now I can toggle on and off. And look, they're all lit, and it's all exactly where I want it to be. Kind of cool. So what I'm going to go through and look at now is where I want to have stuff painted because I've got a couple of controls that I can do. Um, if I just leave them as normal layers, whatever's on top is what's going to be showing and the rest of the dark plane is going to be hidden behind it. Um, I could like decrease the opacity and allow some of the other layers coming through. That's one of the controls I have, but the blending modes is where this magic's really going to happen. So I'm going to take this from normal and we can play with lighten and screen. Uh, those are going to be our two big ones. And so what that'll do is it'll take the brighter areas of a scene and it'll have it kind of carried throughout the entire thing. So I'm going to play with the lighten blending mode, which means that if it's a dark spot on this image, it's not going to be transferring below, uh, but instead it's only the highlights that are going to be changing. So uh, that's kind of cool. And I could go through and just switch all of these all these layers, highlight them, switch the blending mode on them to lighten. And look at that. We have this really, really bright uh, kind of overlit thing because we didn't mask out anything at all. But notice how it's conforming to our clipping mask. Uh, kind of cool. Um, so this is jumping ahead just a little bit, but that's essentially what the process is going to be. I'm going to go ahead and switch these all back to normal and come back at the top so we can take these on one step at a time. So I like to uh, find an area that the image is the light is hitting on this one. So I'm going to turn off all these layers and I'm just clicking and holding to turn them all off. Oop, there was a background. Okay, now background's back on. And this just gives me an idea what is being lit in this one. So I can see on this top layer that I've got kind of this area being lit. And so one layer at a time, I'm going to go through and find areas that I like where the light's hitting and areas that I dislike where the light's hitting. So I'm just going to kind of toggle this one on and off. And I kind of like where that's hitting. It's adding some nice highlights that come through. We've got some nice detail that's there. Um, I'm not crazy about this uh, uh, specular highlight that's right there. I think it's a little bit distracting. But overall, I'm liking what's happening. So what I can do is if I find something I dislike, I can create a mask and come in with black as my foreground layer. So black's here. And I'm just going to create a nice soft brush. So that's 0% hardness. And let's get something that's in here. There we go. And I'm just going to paint that area out. It's like, oh, no, it's going pure black. Uh, and yes, I am on the mask. So that's just areas that are inside here that we wouldn't be seeing. Now that specular highlight is gone. I just masked it out. There we go. So got that one done. Now I can switch this blending mode because I know I want to keep it from normal to lighten. Okay, it's going to look pretty much identical to what our base scene is uh, because we're just lightening it up. And so now I can move on to the next layer. And this one, it's still on normal blending mode. I'm just going to turn it on and let's see where this one's hitting. And so I like to toggle it on and off and just kind of pay attention. What's happening here? What areas do I like? I kind of like what it's doing to this prop. Kind of like what it's doing back here. I like that we brighten up the wheels a little bit. And some of that falls into the other parts of the wheels. Overall, I'm liking a lot of what's happening here. So I'm going to switch this blending mode uh, to lighten and say, you know what? I like a majority of what's happening, but I do want to clean up some areas. I've already got the nose covered. It's getting kind of bright. So I am going to, with a larger brush, just kind of paint that out. Look at that. Now we have all the highlights. There we go. And we've just painted out what we don't like. So this is where we're at so far. And we're going to keep going down. So I'm turning on this next layer. What is this lightening up? Ooh, I love what that's doing inside. I don't like that specular highlight on the very tip. But I like what's happening on the inside. And I like that we're getting some of these catch lights. I actually really like a lot of this. So I'm going to keep most of it going to lighten. And just mask that out. And I don't want the tip hidden. So I'm just going to paint that black. But I do want the inside of that. Look at that. 
we're looking pretty good so far. This area is a little bit bright down here, so I'm just going to kind of mask that out a little bit. Look at that. Okay, on to the next layer. Ooh, we're getting some really cool detail in there. I'm liking everything that's happening here, so I'm just going to switch it to lighten and say, yeah, I like that. No masking needed. Next one. Ooh, I'm just hitting this little tip up there. That one's great. No masking's needed. Look at that. A little bit. Add some nice depth. We're going to go on to that next one. And we're just going to continue doing this for every layer. Okay, so this one adding a couple of catch lights. A little bit of fill. Not doing a whole lot for me. You know what? I don't even need this one. I'm going to get rid of it. Just delete it. Okay, let's try that next one. Ooh, this is lighting up some of those domes. I like that. I don't like what's up here, but I like the rest. So I'm going to go in lighten mode, create a mask, and just a large brush, soft. Just paint out the areas I don't like. Okay, we're looking pretty good. Let's try that again. You know what? I'm looking at this. I don't like that bright highlight that's right there. I thought I did, but I don't. So I'm going to find what layer that's on. Just clicking it. There we go. It's on this top layer. I just want to get rid of that. So I'm going to come over here. I know I'm going back in time. My brush layer. I'm just going to paint that out. There we go. I'm happier with that. Okay. We're back to uh, this new one. Toggling on and off. A little bit of highlights in these front areas I like. I don't like the dome being so bright. We're going to mask out the dome. And switch this to lighten. Look at that. We're just subtly adding in stuff. Find the next one. What's this one doing? We've got some nice uh, rim that's coming up here on the side. I'm kind of digging that. And I like what's happening to the underbelly. I don't like the dome up top. And I don't like how bright that is. So we're going to just mask out the dome. Don't like that one. Don't like what's happening there. I like everything else. And then switch it to lighten. And move on. That one's not doing a whole lot for me. Just going to delete it. Move on. Ooh, this one added in some nice areas for pop. Look at that tire and that back part. That's awesome. Let's paint out the areas we don't like. I don't like that. And we'll switch this to lighten. Okay. Now, this area is looking a little bit bright in comparison to the rest of it. So if we do run into an area that is bright like that, we can just take the opacity and just pull it down. Look at that. We can find an area that looks nice just like that. And so we're just going to continue on this process, finding areas. Ooh, this is a good one because we got some of our original light flare that's coming up. So we're going to have to address that. And I'm liking the texture that's there. I don't really care for the wheel. I don't care for this part. I just like this underbelly texture. And maybe some of the shape that's happening up here. So let's mask out the stuff we don't like. That's definitely a no-go. I don't like nice big brushes. I don't like that. I don't like that. Talk about on and off. Do I like all this stuff? Yeah. I like how it's hitting the wheel. I like how we're popping. A little bit bright up here. So I'm just going to kind of paint some of that out. Ooh, that's looking good. A little bit bright right there. I got a specular highlight. Well, it's going to get rid of that guy. There we go. And switch it to lighten. It's also letting me know I'm done, ready to move on. Next one. Ooh, we got some great light on this one. Look at all those cool areas. Let's figure out where we want to mask it out at. I love what's happening over here in this under part. Not so much a fan of this line over here, so let's get rid of that. Just painting it out. I don't like what's happening up top. Toggle it on and off. You know what? Down here is a little bit distracting. I'm going to get rid of that. There we go. Got some really nice dimension here, and we're going to go lighten. And if this is a bit too bright for you, just take down that opacity. There we go. We're getting some great areas here. Let's turn on this next one. Oh, we got some great wheels here. And this under part. I'm liking certain areas of it. Okay, let's mask out what we don't like. Don't like that. We'll hit that up in another spot. I uh, don't need to do a ton up there, and I don't like how harsh that is. 
But you know what? I did like what it was doing to the wheel. And I don't need quite as much over here. So I can go, and I've got all this, and just reduce that opacity till I get it to where I like it. It's popping. I'm pretty happy with that. Up to the next here. Ooh, we're really making the wing come alive here, and we're getting some great detail on this front part. This is great. All right, so we're back on. Let's start masking out. That's too bright. I don't know where else we're hitting with it. Oh, that shadow, not looking very good there. We'll get rid of that. So this one, I've got a specular highlight here, but I don't want to mask it out because look what happens when I do. It's just a dark blob. That doesn't look good. This might be something that I Photoshop out or see if I have it lit from another direction that adds in some shape because I don't want those specular highlights happening. Ooh, I got a dot that's up here. Look at that. I missed a little bit over here. And I missed a little bit on this one too. Okay. It's a nice thing about masks, we can always go back. So just looking at it, that's looking pretty good. That's a bit bright right there, so we're gonna take out some of that. There we are. Mm-hmm, look at all that shape. We're looking good. Switching that to lighten, and we're moving on down the list. Ooh, we're getting some great areas here. So let's mask out what we don't want. I never wanna see these directional shadows. Doesn't give it that 3D depth to it. So let's keep on toggling. This one's mostly this area, so I'm gonna take off. I'm up here so we don't see anything. We're getting some light, nice light coming in there. I'm okay with that. I'm gonna leave that just as it is and switch this to lighten. Let's go on this next one. See that we're creeping in. We got a cool kind of specular highlight coming down. Uh, which I do enjoy, and the rim that's on the bottom part. Everything else is kind of distracting. doesn't add a whole lot for me. Maybe back here a little bit. So uh, let's, uh, in this case, I'm just going to get rid of everything. So I don't want it all in there, and I'm going to paint with white. I liked what it was doing down here, and I liked that little bit that was up here. So I'm going to leave in those two areas, and everything else is darkened. Next. Maybe we like that specular highlight. Maybe we don't. I don't know. Looking at it, that's the main area that's lit. I don't like the uh, tire overlit, but I don't mind a little bit of this light down here. So I'm gonna create a negative mask by hitting Alter Option and hitting that mask area and just paint in where we like down here. Look at that. If we wanted that specular highlight, we could add it. I think it's a little bit powerful. So I'm gonna kind of taper it off. Great big brush, painting black, and just let that kind of fade out. Look at that. Teeny tiny bit of that highlight down there just to add some shape. There we go. Turn it on off. Not much I'm seeing there. Well, let's see if we can add in a little bit more of that highlight. There we go. Now we're getting some of those reflections there. A little bit bright. So I'm going to tone that down just a little bit. There we go. And switch it to lighten. All right. Our next layer. Ooh, this is where we get some nice... Nice light up on that wing. Look at that. I'm liking it. Okay. I'm going to keep it. We're going to paint out everything we don't like. Black is my foreground color. Nice and big. I'm going up here. Yeah, we got some nice shape to that wing. And it's a bit bright right here. So I could try to like mask it out, but it just completely disappears, right? So in this case, I'm going to take my flow down to about 5%. And now I'm just going to kind of touch a couple of clicks here. So it's just very lightly fading it out. If we look at our mask, look at that. Barely there in black. I hit alter option to uh, just check out what my mask looks like. That's a pretty nice balance. So I'm going to go ahead and switch this one over to lighten. Let me know I'm good. And let's move on to that next one. What's this one doing? Not really adding anything new to this one. I get a little bit more of a highlight on this tip. Um, I think it's worth keeping for that tip. I like how it adds some shape there. I'm going to change my flow back up to 100. I just kind of paint in here. Look at that. That gives me a little bit of shape, but I don't want it quite as bright because that sticks out like a sore thumb. So I'm just going to take that opacity down. There we go. I'm somewhere around 50%, 60%. Got some nice shape. Switch it into lighten. All right. And this next one. Ooh, 
we get some. Uh oh, look at this harsh line right here. What's causing that? Oh, you know what? That's light hitting it uh, as we have that prop coming out. So we definitely need to have that lit, huh? So we're going to get there. And let's go in and just subtly paint that in. Look at that. Now we got that depth. Thought maybe masked out a layer properly, but that's looking good. I could do with something kind of gradual on the front, too. See if I like that. Uh, maybe add a little bit right there. Let's try it. See if we like it. Switch it to lighten. Nice thing, when layers, we can always go back and change stuff if we don't like what's happening. Next one, we're getting some of that underbelly. I like what's happening there. So I'm going to mask out what we don't like up here. Don't like that. A little bit. I kind of like the tire higher contrast. Get rid of that. Subtly lightening down there. Just so it's not as gradual or not as harsh. Have a transition and moving on to the next one. Ooh, now we're getting the front of that plane. I'm liking that. So let's look at this one. I kind of like everything that that's doing. I don't even think I need to mask anything out on it. But I'm at 100% brightness on this one. And it's not glowing as much as I want it to. So uh, what I can do is change this blending mode from normal. So normally we go into lighten, which keeps it exactly the same. But if I pop it into screen, we get a little bit of extra light out of it. Can I also experiment with some of these other color blending modes? So we can get there. You know, I'm kind of liking the darkness. I'm going to stick with lighten. And we'll see if we can add in some more stuff. And if not, we'll handle that. Um, I do get a little bit of a kind of a pop up here. You know what that's from? That's my light that we're actually seeing. Uh-oh. Can't have that one in there. So we're going to come up here. And we're just going to uh, mask out the front of this. And let that one just kind of fall and fade. There we go. It's coming together now. We're starting to look like a painted plane. Look at this next little bit. I like these highlights that are coming up here. So uh, let's toggle that on and off. Look at those highlights. I got my flash. We don't want that one. So let's paint out what we don't want in this. And I like using the brush, but there's a whole bunch of different tools that we can use for this. I think I'm going to mask out that guy, too, because I don't like that transition as much. There we go. So we're still on this layer. Anything I'm liking or not liking? I kind of like all these highlights. I really, really like this layer, so we're just going to stick that one over to lighten. And now we got some nice depth, some nice molding that's happening. Ooh, look at those catch lights up front. Yeah, that's nice. Look at that. We're just looking at these lights up here. So I toggle that on and off. Some nice light on the inside, some specularity. I'm liking what's happening there, but I don't like some of these lights in here. So we're just going to mask those out because they're not adding it for me. And go through. We're looking pretty good. Toggle that on and off again. I kind of like a little bit of the more contrasty there. So we'll block out that area, but leave it everywhere else. Like how that's picking up there. Maybe take that area out too. All personal preference. And when we're done with that layer, switch it to lighten. Move on. This one's real small in this area. So I'm going to zoom in, check it. That doesn't add a whole lot for me. A little bit up here, which I like. So, nah, actually, I'm kind of okay without that. I'm deleting the layer. A little bit of light that's coming over here, but I think that might be kind of an overblown. Yep. <laughs> My light, not a whole lot this one's adding. So, I'm going to ditch it. That's so why we overshoot, so we have some options. I do. I don't really like what that one's doing, so we're going to delete it. He, the dome, that's glowing. And inside is kind of glowing. I kind of like them both off. So we're going to ditch that one. 
Barely doing anything. It's already been covered elsewhere. We're ditching it. Ooh, we got a small highlight down here, which I actually kind of like. So we're going to keep that one, and I'm just changing that one into Lighten, and we're moving on. You know, same thing. Do I like it? Let's get closer. Kind of like it darker. I think it's got better definition. Getting rid of it. Again, we're out. Looking at it. Ooh, we've got some highlights that are coming up in here. Oop. Too much zoom. You know what? I like these ones. I like what's happening here. We're adding some nice shape and dimension. Anything I dislike? Nope. We're going to keep that and go into screen. Or, excuse me, lighten. <laughs> Hey, we got some great color coming through on this one. Let's take that one to lighten so we can see how it interacts and then just pull down the opacity because I like the, the green showing through that we get a little bit of that backlight, but it's a bit overpowering. So I'm going to find mm, somewhere around 40% for me here. Get on this one. Get a little bit of definition up top, which I like, and a little bit of wing definition. So we'll keep that one into lighten but I got uh, my flash that was here so just painting that out just painting it saying goodbye all right so we got a pretty cool look and this is where I do kind of some final checks on here see if there's anything that I dislike um, I'll start at the back of the plane I've got light everywhere all the elements are popping pretty well a little bit dark there you can see my mask isn't perfect that's okay coming up Overall, I've got pretty good light. I don't like that little specular highlight there. So that kind of lets me know that that is the area that I need to focus on. It's like, okay, where is the specular highlight? So now I'm going to go through and just toggle each of these uh, lights. That's not my specular. Hey, there's one of them. Let's mess that out. They're still there a little bit. That's where it is. We'll mask that one out too. Okay, so we're looking pretty good as it is right now, right? So if there was an area that uh, we just didn't get light in, uh, like when I was lighting, I kind of missed what was happening on this inside part, right? So if I were to uh, collapse this, put it in here, and look at, say, one of these. I can see that there's definitely uh, some areas in here that are lit in those shadowed um, sections. So I need to uh, get uh, some light in there. And this is why we do the overshooting both over and under exposed. So if we ever need any of that detail, we can get it. So I'm going to take this image and just duplicate it and drag it up here. So it's in my plane. So now if I'm looking, here it is, right up on top. Oh, let's, for the sake of uh, simplicity and clarity, uh, put that back on that dark background. There we go. Okay, so our plane's here, and it is showing everything, right? I don't need it to show everything. So I'm going to hold down Alter Option and create this mask, so it's a negative mask. And now I'm going to change my flow to about 5%, and I can change my foreground color to white. And now we can go in and just paint in areas that... Uh, might have got missed, like this one. So I'm just kind of painting in some of those. Look at that detail we're adding back in. Kind of cool, huh? If there's somebody somewhere else that we missed, maybe needs a little bit of love, like, oh, you know what? On top of that's a little bit dark. Let's add in. That might be a little bit heavy. Let's come up wider one and just paint wide. Look at that. We just added in a subtle, subtle amount right there. Maybe I want a little bit come up here. Just wrap around that. I don't even know what that thing is. We're adding it in. Let's add some specularity. Looking pretty good. That got a little bit dark there, so let's add in. Um, my flow's so low that it's just barely happening. Look at that. Barely, barely there. But it's just giving us some of those extra details. Um, so I think we did a pretty good job of hitting up most of it. Might want a little bit of light in there because I like to see those things. Look at that. A little bit. Not much. A little bit comes through. I miss, I miss that. Just touch it. Just touch it a little teeny tiny bit. 
And look at that. We're we're flowing like crazy. So this is uh, where we started, and that's kind of the light painting that's there. So now we've got the plane pretty well done. And because we've worked with this mask, if we were to take it out, look at all that. All the flashes, all the things that we combine, lens flare, everything. Uh, it's all right there, uh, but we've combined it into one frame. Instead, we're just looking at the painted one because we've masked it out. So it is at this point that uh, I want to start working on some of the background elements, the scene that we're looking at and grounding it. Okay, So we have our dark area right up on top, and it looks beautiful. Uh, but we're missing some of the detail that's like in the shadowed area. It's really, really dark. So we're going to create a mask on this, and we're just working on the background. So uh, anything that I do, I'm going to change my flow up to 100 so we can see, uh, and my foreground color to black so we can mask. So anything like, hey, if I'm starting to paint, look, it's getting lighter behind it, right? And if I get these trees, things, we're starting to get detail. The cement starting to get detail. But if I intersect with the plane, okay, the plane's not going to get a whole lot of that. Okay, we're in lighten mode with everything, so uh, uh, some of that's going to pop through. But I just wanted to show you what's happening with this area, and we're just going to go ahead and fill it because we can start working in with very low flow. So I'm going to go about 5%, make sure that I've got a nice soft brush that's here, and I'm going to go big. So there's two things I want to do. I want to lighten up some of this stuff that's behind it. Um, so I'm just going to kind of paint in where I have some of these details just to throw in some texture that's there. There we go. Make sure we're hitting that. Because I want that not to be pure black. And if you get like up in the sky and you're like, oh no, I shouldn't have done the sky. Coming up here. Uh, just mask it back out. Uh, there we go. So now we got some detail that's coming through here. And if as you're doing this, you really don't like uh, some of the detail that's happening, uh, we can't always like resume our mask and make sure that we're painting out around it. Um, I don't mind the subtlety of that, so uh, I'm going to keep it. And if we needed it even lighter, uh, we could always mask this one as well. And say, you know what, I really want to throw in a ton of light. I think this one's going to be way too much and distracting. But I'll show you and show you that uh, uh, negative technique too. So let's say that that was what we wanted, but now we've added in light and it's hitting our plane. Uh, just load the plane up. We're still on this area and I'm going to fill that with Alter, Option, Backspace, oh, excuse me, <laughs> uh, Control, or, uh, uh, option, or Command, Backspace, and now we've got uh, it masked out where the plane was. Uh, that's not a technique that we are going to need at all for this, um, but I just want to show you if you needed to add in a little bit more details. So coming back up to this main one, we added in some definition to this background, uh, but the plane kind of looks like it's floating. So we need to add in something that's going to ground it. Because if we look at our originals, look at all that flash that's around it. That feels like it belongs there, right? Um, so we want to let some of that in. And I'm just going to get a nice big brush, low flow, and just kind of paint in about where the wheels are. Look at that. And I'm just going to kind of scatter that. Look at that. So we got some... Kind of hot spots. Look at that. We're just giving it a spot so it doesn't feel like it's so kind of awkwardly out there. This is all to visual preference. Um, so what that mask looks like. Coming up. Just getting what you need. Just painting in just a little bit. Nice and big and slow, does it? Look at that. Just like that. And shape. If you're like, you know what? That's a little too much light. Maybe don't need that. Okay, that's okay. That's easy to do. Switch foreground color to white. Now we can just kind of paint that in and very gradually getting it where we don't want it. Look at that. We just have a little bit of depth that's added in there. Very, very nice. And we have our plane with all of our nice highlights that are on it. Look at that. So pretty. Um, if you want to make sure that uh, um, you don't have any of that bleed through that's happening as well, we can't always make sure that our bottom layer or any layer that we don't have a mask, I'm going to switch these ones, any layer we don't have a mask, instead of this one being, oh, that one's at low opacity, 
There we go. That one's at 100. We'll move that one to the bottom because we're in light mode. Nothing changes. Um, if we want to make sure that nothing bleeds through, just change this bottom one to normal uh, versus being on lighten. And uh, anything that's behind it will now, uh, this will be kind of the back base background layer with everything else stacked up on top. So that was in lighten. We see some of the bleeding from where I lighten the background. Normal. We have none of that bleeding going through. So uh, just a way that we can address that that's a little bit different. Uh, but we've got kind of a base that's here now. And at this point is where I go through and start uh, paying attention to some of the smaller details and doing anything that I need to do to direct focus. Oop, I'm noticing that I've got some uh, uh, pretty busy catch lights that are happening here. Thought we already went through. I didn't see those before. So uh, let's find what layer they're on. Hey, there they are. Okay. We're just going to mask that out. Get back to my brush. I'm going to take my flow back up to 100. Make that actually be on the mask. That might be helpful, huh? I'm just going to paint out that stuff because I don't like it. Or if you did want it, it can be very, very subtle. But I kind of like it without. So we pay attention to everything else. Not what that is. So play around. Uh, but uh, areas, I kind of want where this is to have a little bit more punch, more pop to it. I didn't get a shot that was directly on it that I liked what that light was doing. So let's artificially add one in. To do that, I'm going to add, I'm still within my mask area. I'm going to add in a curves layer. There we go. And I'm going to change. I'm not tweaking this at all to do it, although I could if I wanted to make it glow or something like that. But I want to stay pretty natural. So I'm going to change this from normal to screen. And look what that does. Just normal to screen. It lightens it, just like if we were to drag this middle point. Um, but it's playing at what's going to be 50% darkness and lighter. And I'm just going to invert this mask, Control-I. And now, with a nice big brush on white, soft, 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 I can come up here and I can throw in some detail where we want to focus on. Look at that. I'm just lightening stuff up. Looks like a light was hitting there, huh? But we added that one in. That's, not, that's just lightening up the layer. That's not doing anything else. And you know what? I hit some stuff I didn't want. Let's get mask it out. Look at that. Pretty cool. It's maybe a little bit heavy. And you know what? I might want to move that over a little bit. So I'll just kind of play. I'll just be like, you know what? I want to light about there. I like that. And let's reduce that opacity just a hair. There we go. So I'm about... 85% and we got some nice focus in where we want it. Let's do one more and really pull some attention into grumpy. Uh, so we're going to change this blending mode to screen. I'm going to invert that. And this time I'm just going to hit up on grumpy that lower part and then just reduce the opacity down. I like how grumpy's looking. I don't like as much up there. So I'm just going to mask that out. Look at that. We just threw some attention into Grumpy. Kind of cool. Kind of cool. Okay. So now we're seeing that we've got a pretty neat scene that's going through. And we can start with um, any minor cleanups that we need to do. Because remember, we kind of roughed in some of this mask. So we're going through. So you'll notice that like, hey, there's a little bit that's not there. Or some of those backgrounds not addressed at all. Or what are we doing with the wheel chocks? Um, so we've got some questions uh, that we want to kind of clean up. So at this point, what I like to do is just go in on this mask. I get a nice hard brush. This one's important. I want to be at 100% hardness. Okay, don't forget that one. And I am now able to go in and start painting. So remember, black is going to hide. Um, so if I paint it black, let's come up in here, paint it black. It's going to get dark. See, because we're masking that out. You can still see stuff there because our base layer has it. Our background layer has that stuff. See? And uh, white will add into it. So we can we get our black and our white that we can do. So we can go through and start finding subtle, subtle things that we want to pull attention into. Um, and I'm just going to go through now and do this and just mask out stuff that we don't want and make sure that we can see stuff that we do. So if there's anything that should have been lit that wasn't, uh, this is the time now to fix it. So we're just going to get there. That could use a little bit of light. 
completely missed this area. All right, so I've cleaned that up so that uh, we've got a nice mask. And you might be wondering, why did we use a hard brush for this? Uh, don't we want to kind of blend in some of these transitions a little bit more? And the answer is yes, yes, we do. But by doing it hard, we have a very defined pattern that we're working with, and then we can universally control what that blur is. So I'm going to find an area that's pretty high contrast, some light, maybe up here. And what we can do is look at the properties. If you're not seeing that, that's a window and then down to properties. And we've got a feather button. So we are a slider. We can now slide this and look what happens. I can kind of blur how much that plane's going to be going. So I don't need a very big blur. So zero is going to be totally hard. But let's look at what we do if we add in like a, uh, here's a 0.6 pixel blur. That just gives it a nice soft feeling kind of adds to the uh, the overall image. I like what that does to it. It feels good. So I'm going to go ahead and keep that uh, with just a 0.6 blur. That just helps kind of polish everything together. I also elected uh, not to paint in the, the wheel chalk. So if it's hidden somewhere and I don't want it, let's go here. I kind of like it to uh, disappear. So I'm not going to include that. That'll just be the ambient light that's going to be hitting it. Uh, it's at this point that we can also see if there's other stuff that we don't want in our scene uh, that we're going to want to address. Uh, for instance, if I've got uh, random lights, highlights anywhere like this, I don't have another image that doesn't have it, so I have to address that. Um, I've got some background cleanup to do as well, uh, which we'll be looking at here in just a second, but let's look at how to take care of things like these specular highlights. Uh, I'm going to turn off these curves adjustments uh, for just a second and create a brand new layer. And now I can just come in here and I'm going to switch the blending mode to normal on my uh, clone. And I can kind of paint in what's going to be similar here and just paint that out. Look at that. Kind of cool. We can just kind of get that nice matted feel and just make it disappear. So your choice on how you do that, but find areas that you dislike and you can kind of paint them in uh, so that, uh, or paint them out rather, uh, so that they're not there. So they don't pull attention away from your, your primary subject. So that's what we're gonna do for cleaning it. And then I'm just gonna turn back on those lights that kind of point us there. I've got kind of this pole in the background, which I find distracting. So I'm gonna turn off this, go back in my background layer, and we're gonna create a new layer on top of it. And now we can use your favorite methods for cleaning up any background elements. I'm just using the uh, uh, healing brush. I'm just gonna paint that out. There we go. I don't like that there. I don't like that we've got this telephone pole here. Well, that's gonna be gone now. Get, and those wires too. Looking pretty good. Now we got, we'll clone that out too. There we go. Okay, look for other elements. I kind of like these not being lit. Uh, they add a little bit of personality. Uh, that thing, kind of annoying. So let's go ahead and just clone that out. I don't know if that's a stripe or if that was something else, but let's get rid of it. There we go. That one kind of intersects a little bit right here. So let's clear that out. And remember, if I turn that on, it's going to be back to how it was. So I don't have to be totally precise with this. So, you know, we're just going to paint that out, even though it eats out part of that prop. I put it on the front one. It's back. Hey, kind of cool, huh? Uh, so I'm just looking for anything that's going to be uh, distracting. If there's like oil spills or things that I didn't like through here, that's like, I don't know what's going on right here. We're going to get rid of that. I didn't want all these things. I think they kind of add to the scene, let us know we're at the airport, so I don't mind them. Uh, but if something directly uh, interferes with the subject, so let's look at that again. We're looking pretty cool. I'm pretty happy uh, with this and how it's feeling. Um, so now we can go into overall toning and kind of add in a little bit of continuity to this image. So once you're at this point, I like to uh, compress everything into one image. So I'm going to go Control, Alt, Shift, and E, creating a merged layer. Uh, and now we can open this up in Adobe Camera Raw. And this will let me play with the image as a whole. 
Uh, so just looking at the basic sliders, uh, we can kind of play around and say, you know what, the highlights, maybe let's bump those up just a little bit so we can get some uh, specularity coming through. If you want to play with shadows, like just find what makes you happy with it. There's no right or wrong answer. Um, I like them to pop just a little bit and we get a full range of uh, motion. So I'm going to come up here and up the contrast just a little bit. We're doing everything as a global adjustment. Uh, so we get some kind of cool stuff. I'm liking what that's looking like. Uh, maybe add in some overall texture as a whole. Not very much, just maybe a little bit. Play with kind of our vibrance. We'll do that. Ooh, that's looking nice. That's looking nice. Um, so we've got kind of a nice uh, polished. This pops like crazy. It's got this 3D feeling to it. Uh, so we know we are playing with it well and that we've got a lot of cool stuff that's going on. So I'm going to hit OK. And I noticed on here, I'm not digging with this highlight that's on this tire. That's a little bit distracting. So I'm going to want to take care of that. Uh, I don't mind that one as much, but uh, I definitely disliked what was happening here. Um, so we could go back in time and find what layer is causing that highlight that's on it. Um, in this case, I am just going to uh, uh, take this and change my blending mode to darken on my clone tool. Come down here pretty low and just paint in that area so I don't have that highlight. Your choice on how you deal with these things, but if there is something that you dislike, uh, address it. Never too late. Use whatever techniques you prefer for doing it. If there was something that's like, you know what, I don't like that. I decided just paint it in. We don't have to keep it. There we go. Getting something kind of cool. Kind of fun. It's popping. Uh, now that I'm at this point, I uh, want to crop this in just a little bit. And you know what? Let's look at this as a 5 by 7 ratio. I think that would work out pretty well. Remember, we shot wide so that we can crop in. We can get the uh, composition that we like. I want it to take up pretty full width. I want it to be grounded pretty decently. There we go. So plane's taking up the bottom. Two-thirds of the image. Go like that. And we are cropped. Ooh, that looks fun. And there we go, ladies and gentlemen. That's how we combine all of these images into a light painting. Uh, we've taken Grumpy and uh, we brought him to life. Let him shine just a little bit.